been having this vision. Uh, I've been having this vision. Either the or you fall. I'm on a mission, bringing my dreams to fruition. I ain't playing at all. Bring out the body bags. I'm about to kill them, deliver them to the mortician. I gotta do what I gotta do. Welcome to the WSL Post Show after the opening day of competition here on the sixth day of the waiting period for the Outer Known TD Pro. Celebrating women back here competing at Teahupo after 16 years. What a wait that was, especially with last year getting canceled and finally seeing the world's best compete over the shallow reef. A couple little sets in there, a few barrel rides to talk about to set up some pretty heavyweight heats in the elimination round as we feel like we're just getting started here at the end of the road. Joe Trapel, Laura Enever, and Peter Mel. Pete, how nice was it to catch up with seven-time world champ Lane Beachley uh, as she got to play Remember When, those early stages of competing out here? Well, again, she was at the forefront. I mean, uh, you never thought that at seven world titles would actually be able to <laughs> beat, uh, you know, that record being broken. Uh, it hasn't yet. Uh, she's still tied with uh, Steph Gilmore, but also you think about Carissa Moore and what she's been able to do. I mean, uh, it's been an incredible time frame and in 16 years she was able to compete here and talk about the fear that it was uh, you know part of competing here and we know that the, some of these women in this event are feeling the same way Laura you're a competitor I think of right away that would have just really loved this opportunity to compete here how proud of you of the women on what they put down today I'm so proud of them. I mean, yeah, after 16 years to be back here, and like Carissa was saying in her, in her post it interview, it's been a long year. There's been a lot of changes this year. There's been a lot of changes to the schedule and these waves uh, pipeline and Te Hopu being added in. And, you know, the women at the, the back of their head all year knew that last event's going to be in Tahiti and uh, we're going to have to push our limits there. But, uh, you know, the anticipation's been boiling up and I think today was, this afternoon was the perfect way to get started. You know, it wasn't anything too big or crazy, but it was, you know, there was opportunity for turns and some nice barrels and for the women to just find their, their lineups in the surf. It's, there hasn't been much in terms of, you know, opportunity to warm up the last few weeks while everyone's been here. So that was the warm up before a big swell on its way. Oh, Fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. So exciting. Well, last heat winner was Courtney Conlog. She's now hanging out with Dimity. Wow, Courtney, that was an incredibly slow heat. How do you manage the emotions knowing that we're here in one of the best barreling waves of the world and you might need to end up doing turns to win the heat? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not what you plan or visualize. You know, you visualize yourself getting barreled at Chopu, but uh, sometimes you got to grind it out and definitely grateful to be into the course. It's been a while, so uh, just try and find the rhythm here and you know, this is such a magical wave when it's on, and I would love to see it happen, this event. And you've spent a lot of time, you know, trying to practice and get as much information surfing out there, and we know the forecast is looking really good. How excited are you for the rest of the waiting period? Yeah, I mean, I'm a surf geek, so <laughs> I'm always uh, putting the time in and seeing how I can improve and evolve, you know. Uh, haven't done a lot of backside barrel riding in a while, so it was nice to freshen up with that. and. It's really nice, the camaraderie out in the lineup right now with the guys. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to the swell that's coming. And fingers crossed, the weather's nice to us. Hope so. So excited to watch you. Can good luck in the next round. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Dimity and Courtney. Always makes a smile and laugh in her post seed interviews. We hung out with Courtney the other day, Pete, in the channel. And she was one of the women that just came up to us and said, hey, I didn't really come here to do turns. No. I want to get barreled. And winning on a day like today, where it was a little smaller for probably what she's hoping for, she's got a lot to look forward to in the next couple of days. She does. And I think that that was a big win for her. I mean, it's unfortunately disappointing. I mean, I like the call to be able to pull it off, you know, to stop it because it really was slowing down. We're going to see that d decline before we see it start to pick up tomorrow. Of course, we're, again, fingers crossed with that local weather that we're going to have some glassy conditions through tomorrow. But I think we're supposed to have some rain overnight. Uh, so we'll, we'll buckle down for that. Well, it was a short after afternoon, but we still have a lot to celebrate. Uh, for Carissa Moore, she had a big heat, her opening round heat earlier today with Vahine Fierro and also Gabrielle O'Brien. She was one heat away from clinching a spot. She got the win today into the quarterfinals. She's guaranteed to be in yellow at the Rip Curl WSL Finals, Laura. She is. It's her favorite color. We all know that. And she now gets to wear that into the Rip Curl WSL Finals coming up next month. And uh, yeah, very, very excited. Uh, Carissa, obviously, 
two years in a row making you know getting that that number one seed into trestles but today showing her showing why she's the champ she actually she turned it on out there and got the best waves of the day and just her technique and barrel riding was amazing well, she Laura, wasn't, I'm, I'm sorry just about Vahine, right Vahine was not an easy surfer to come up against here at Chopo. I mean, one of the most comfortable uniques that you can see right there. She's going to be a force to be reckoned with this in the event. You know, um, she is one of the best out here. The forehand was helpful for her. She just had one wave. She was one wave short. Vahine, dangerous wild card, smooth style, got one barrel, not enough to get the heat win, but she is reseeded now into the elimination round where she will have Joanne DeFay in heat number one when we get there. It's always reseeded all, all the way up to the quarter, so she might get another shot against Chris Samora. As we see the Rip Curl WSL Finals, one name is officially in the number one spot, just like last season. Chris awaiting in the title match to see who will be coming her way. Last year, it went to that third match, and Tati was basically one turn away from taking the world title. We'll see what happens this year, Laura. I cannot wait. There's yeah, so much to be un, you know, unfolded here in Tahiti, and those final three spots are up for grabs. So let's see if, uh, you know, between Tati, Stephanie, Brisa, Lakey, Tyler, you know, down to Gabby and Isabella can, you know, solidify their spots. And a lot of those names that have a chance are in the elimination round yeah. as we focus on a highlighted performance. Caroline Marks getting nice and barreled today on her forehand. Had the two-time world champ Tyler Wright in the water. Joanne DeFay, the number two seed as well, famous for a solid back end in waves like this. And it being Caroline's day to get nice and tubed, Pete. That was fun to watch. And again, that's the forehand. She was able to wait for a very long time to find this wave right here. And again, just streaks through it, doesn't let the lip touch her at all. That's why it went into the six range. And it was enough to, she was able to get that back up right away, which is so important. She saw and understood that there was a moment there where there's just going to be, you know, a few waves in the middle part of the heat. She was able to get this turns done and gets the heat win. Yeah, I loved Caroline's positioning, just taking off right behind that peak, which is what you need to do here when we see the best barrels out here. The, the surfs are taking off and swooping straight under the lip. As we check out the opening round, heat number three scores, Mark 6.17. She was on the boat with Dimity saying, obviously, first heat ever out here. And that was exactly what she dreamed of her entire life. She had a famous clip a couple of years ago from a strike mission. We felt that she'd be comfortable, especially this size on her forehand, and did some damage for two surfers that are really thinking about the Rip Curl WSL finals. So kind of almost a wild card feeling win there for Caroline Marks. And that's going to send world number two into this uh, probably dreaded matchup. Joanne versus Vahine Fierro. P. what do you see here? Uh, I just, I mean, you think about this matchup, I and mean, Vahine, for my eyes, is uh, going to be the one to watch in this. I mean, she's so comfortable growing up in P French Polynesia here. Uh, has such an amazing backhand, which is really what she's known for, uh, but ultimately has been spending a lot of time out here and putting it on bigger de days, which I think is going to be a, a distinct advantage if we start to see the swell come up, which of course, it's forecast too. Just hard not to keep, keep referencing the Moana Jones Wong story of pipeline and where Vahine might go in this event. Uh, Laura, you were telling me earlier, reflecting on the pipe conditions, Moana as well had to deal with small conditions to start yeah. the event earlier this year, but things dramatically changed with the swell as well. Yeah, I can imagine uh, a lot of the girls that were in that elimination round really probably made it pretty vocal, but especially Vahine saying, let's wait to, you know, get, get the real Tahiti and Chopu that we love to see. And we know that she's going to really excel in, but, uh, you know, she's so comfortable out there. She makes it look so effortless. And now that she's through, I, I mean, we, we know that she's just going to push Joanne DeFay to, and I just think it's going to be a pretty crazy heat, that one. Oh, Amazing matchup. So much excitement when you come to Tahiti, looking for big barrels, but we're also reminded how beautiful and important our ocean is to protect. Let's get caught up with the We Are One Ocean campaign. Coral is such a huge part of our life as surfers. It's what makes these amazing waves. We have to try to protect it at all costs. We are in Tahiti doing a reef restoration project with coral gardeners and the Tahiti ET Surf Club. All the coral fragments are in the water and they will teach you how to make some ropes. Adobe is partnering with the WSL's We Are One Ocean initiative in Tahiti to hashtag create waves and we're challenging the surf community to use creativity to inspire the protection of our one ocean. Can you guys do by yourself? I think so. Yeah. One day I went surfing and I saw that the coral reef were dying. And every day I saw it happening. If we lose it, 
We love the surf, we love the fish, the oxygen we breathe. We are on a mission to revolutionize ocean conservation and try to build a movement to help save coral reef ecosystems. <laughs> it's kind of a way of giving back to the ocean. We know how the corals are important for the ocean and for the planet Earth. Is that Jamie? We invite all the kids from um, our club and the community to come to show the kids what is the important and how to do the plantation. It's just very important because the kids are the future. In one year's time, I can come back and look at how my coral reef grew and how I helped impact the environment in a really good way. Little differences can make really big differences in the end. Just being aware of the things that you do can affect the ecosystems around you. It plays an important role for us as surfers, but not just surfers, fishermen, fish, sharks, all kinds of wildlife and marine wildlife. And it's one of our greatest ecosystems, and if we don't look after it, it could be extinct. Through the Create Waves initiative, Adobe is asking creators everywhere to make the case for ocean protection. During the Tahiti Pro, we are posting what we can do to help like the Coral Gardeners Initiative to show how our collective actions can make an impact. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you're doing to protect and conserve our one ocean. Download the Adobe Express app, search for World Surf League to get our custom template. Share your creations on social with hashtag CreateWaves and hashtag WeAreOneOcean and tag Adobe and WSL for a chance for your post to be seen in the lead up to the WSL finals in September. We are loving the Adobe uh, connection with We Are One Ocean. And remember, you can get Adobe Express. That's what all of our influencers and surfers will be using. It actually makes posting easy. You can make really creative content. And we want to hear from you. And you'll see how you can make a really positive impact on the ocean today and for future generations. Uh, speaking of the ocean, we're expecting it to pick up quite dramatically in size. Let's bring up the Surfline forecast for the outer known TD Pro and see what we'll have for tomorrow, Pete. What do you see in there? Well, we're seeing swell, right? That's the one we've been watching on the maps. It's been consistently there. It's been, you know, show forecast to show up on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. The one dynamic of it all is the wind, and this place is dynamic. We've got, obviously, mountains and valleys, and we've got a low that's sitting over the top of us. It's going to spin some winds. We don't know what direction, so we got to wake up and go. Tours and competitions are going to have to be on it tomorrow, figuring out what window of opportunity we're going to have. we got the swell there. we got the energy coming up. We see it there, 8 to 12-foot faces. That's what we want. And then through the week, Thursday, Friday, awesome. Got that easterly wind flow, which is offshore with that swell. So lots of opportunity those two days. I'm excited. Laura, can you tell? Yeah, I can see you're excited. <laughs> I'm just going thinking, Laura, you were just recently on tour. What are your former competitors feeling right now in their gut, knowing that the ocean's going to be crazy big in the next couple of days and they're going to have to be ready to go? Yeah, well, they got their warm-up today, uh, got their opportunity to feel the lineup, and I, I think they're going to be getting on their jet skis bright and early tomorrow morning and coming out to watch that ocean come alive and just pick the eyes out of it. If the men's are on, they're just going to watch very, very closely, find their lineups, do a lot of, like Courtney was saying in her post-interview, geeking out on any bit of information <laughs> they can so that when they get the opportunity to go out there, they can also come alive. Uh, maybe, maybe Joanne will just sit very close to Vahine. <laughs> that's going to be a crazy match of Vahine Fierro once again has world number two, Joanne DeFay, potentially first thing in the morning as we get to the top five of the opening day of competition here at the Outer Known TD Pro. Number five on the list, 16 years to wait for the return for the women at Tehupo. Got to love it. You know, I think that uh, it's been too long. It really has. Uh, you know, the surfing has always been there, but finally to be back here competing with the men in a coincided event, I think that's something that I, even some of the competitors have mentioned in their post interviews, how it's been in the lineup for those warm-ups, because it's important. Number four, Steph Gilmore, smooth into the quarterfinals. Yes, yeah, Steph got everything started in the first heat this morning and, uh, yeah, got a nice little cover up there. Nothing crazy, but just was happy to get out there and get going in a very slow heat. That next heat uh, with Carissa came alive. But, you know, for Steph, probably the best, you know, conditions that she's had, and she's been here for over three weeks. So, you know, getting the ball rolling. 
coming in to number three, two time for the Floridian, Pete. It's so good from, uh, you know, the positioning early in this heat, I was kind of scratching my head going, hey, she's forehand, she's not sitting that deep, but she's working with Luke Egan, and they've been spending a lot of time in exactly that, trying to figure out where to sit in this lineup. She set in the right spot, and it worked out really well for her. Long anticipated wait for this woman to be in the water here to compete. Vahine Fierro gets number two on the daily top five. And we knew that the uh, crowd, all the boats would be going wild, and uh, this is just the beginning of it. Uh, Vahine just swooping into that, so far behind it, knows this wave so well. Her positioning is just absolutely perfect, and, you know, just the one wave in that heat, but she, you know, showed us what she's got. Taking over the post show, getting the number one spot. Carissa Moore officially number one heading into the Rip Curl WSL Finals. We think about this number one uh, round, the opening round, been very tough for Carissa Moore throughout this season. So I think this is going to be very good for her confidence coming through uh, her first heat out here and getting the win and two barrels. To, you know, no one else did that today. This heat had the best barrel opportunities. We saw it and Carissa was able to get the best too. So she's feeling the rhythm right now. And also, she mentioned in her post interview that she knew that if she made it through this round and if Vahine makes it through her elimination round, she knows that in the quarterfinals she'll be matched up with the top and the bottom seed. So I think Carissa coming into this, you know, event, a lot of anticipation, but just so keen to push herself. Really excited to see what could unfold uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Make sure your fantasy teams are set on WorldSurfLeague.com. It could be a very early start for the best surfers in the world. We haven't seen the men yet in competition, or we could start with the first seed of the elimination round for the women. Take care, you guys. We'll see you bright and early. Welcome to Absolute Paradise. We are here on a little village called Te Upo. The women coming back to Tahiti after 16 years. It's always been one of those waves where I was like, oh, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to compete there. Not easy. It's not an easy task. I think I have a brief understanding of kind of the line. I think the fear is part of this wave. Looks like we've got Steph Gilmore on her opening ride, looking for a little bit of vision. Hey, Call it. Teresa, she's dragging in. Oh, she's going to get pitted. And she's coming out. Nice. <laughs> Stops the takeoff, pulls in under the hood, gets the exit. Woo! Local wild card, Vahine Fierro. <laughs> This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.